two islands are being torn away from each other significantly in just three days. We will talk about that. Guys, this earthquake swarm in Japan at the Tokara Islands is getting more mysterious by the day and the earthquakes are increasing again. Just today we started out, the morning began with a 4.4 and they keep coming. Since June 21st until now, we already have more than 2,000 recorded earthquakes above magnitude 1. There's way more in the micro seismic range. And Akuzekijima just started the day with a magnitude 4.4 and they keep coming during the day. So what is happening there? What is causing this? So many strange news. I reported in my last video that the crustal movement underneath these islands had accelerated two to four centimeters that much just in two or three days. And now two islands are being torn apart. Guys, this sounds really, really crazy. And we have so many earthquakes in the magnitude 5 or higher range, 5.6, 5.4, and they keep coming. And now some residents of especially um, Akuzakijima have been evacuated, but there's still some residents on the island because they need to take care of animals, livestock. But... Of course, the residents are wondering when they could return. And authorities said, well, if we have consecutive five days without a magnitude 4 earthquake, then you can come back. We're far from that. There's no way they can come back. It's intensifying. Japan is stepping up their earthquake preparedness in the area, their tsunami defenses because now they're starting to become more worried about this thing since it's so long lasting, unprecedented in the time, the duration, but also in the number of quakes and in the number of magnitudes, the high magnitudes, so many of them. A lot of new information in this video, guys, but let's start with the islands being torn apart. This sounds crazy, but it's really true. The Tukara Islands is an island group that sits basically on a volcanic arc. They also call it like the Ryuko Arc, the Ryuko Islands. Two of these islands have shifted away from each other in opposite directions over four inches, 10 centimeters in just three days. This is massive, geologically speaking. The islands are small. They're in the southwestern part of Japan. But over the course of three days, four inches because of these earthquakes. So while the earthquakes keep coming, the Japanese researchers have discovered that two small islands in the Tokara Island group, Kodakara and Takara, have shifted apart by nearly 10 centimeters, four inches in just three days. And what they are telling us, this is the official version, they say, this is an unprecedented situation. This raises concerns about the possibility of a major disaster. This sounds scary, guys. Let's dissect this. A professor of the Higher School of Sciences at the Chohoku University, Ota Yuzaku, has had a closer look at that, used data from the Geospatial Information Agency of Japan, their observation points and their mobile phone towers. That is interesting, to analyze the movement of the Earth's crust. And that study has revealed that when a 5.6 magnitude, the largest earthquake so far, happened on July 2nd, that the Kodakara Island has shifted six centimeters to the north-northwest, and the Takara Island has moved four centimeters to the south, moving away from each other. How can they do this? Are the actual islands moving or is the crust moving? And what the scientists say is concerning is that normally with the crustal setting there, 
both islands are moving in the same direction, northeast. But after the 5.6 earthquake, the Takara Island has shifted to the south against its usual pattern and its usual direction. So that's why the scientists suggest that now the two islands are moving apart rather than in the same direction as they did before. Why is the big question? Yuzaku has explained that this totally abnormal movement of the islands may not directly be caused by the magnitude 5.6 earthquake. Because when you look at the size of that earthquake and the distance that this earthquake had from the islands, something else is happening. And we know that most scientists now say this earthquake swarm is volcanic slash magmatic. Magma is on the move, maybe a magma intrusion, magma moving underneath, not finding a way to the surface, maybe not yet. One possible cause for this, but it's not confirmed, could be the infiltration of underground fluids such as magma, that's an underground fluid, into the Earth's crust. And then it causes the crust to expand. It's soaking the crust. It's expanding along with the slow shifting of the fault lines in the shallow areas of the continental plate. There's a lot of flights and movements in this area. But what Yuzaku acknowledged that it is still unclear whether this movement of the Earth's crust will lead to a major earthquake in the future. That possibility is on the table. So what he's planning to do now, he wants to look at historical data and examine them in the very detail. Hopefully he can use AI to do a better job, a faster job, and to have the ability to process more data, to write an algorithm, to look out for certain indicators. And then he hopes to investigate the true cause of this, how they call it, unprecedented phenomenon. The Japanese scientists, and I'm pretty sure other scientists around the world, they're urgently, how they say, working to understand this situation in order to be able to assess potential risk factors that might arise in the future. This is an area, earthquakes, landslides, volcanic eruptions, tsunamis can all come together or be triggered together. We're seeing some of these volcanoes popping right now that sit in the area of this earthquake swarm. These little islands, they are volcanoes. So far the scientists say it's not related. Will they stick with that version? Maybe not. In my last video, I have reported about the doctor that has been coming to the islands for years and decades and says, I've felt all these earthquakes, but this one, this is different. This swarm is something else. And imagine this shaking repeatedly for many days in a row now, for weeks, we have to say. So people that are on these islands are suffering hundreds of little earthquakes per day. And now we hear from a school principal, Yoshiro Tobo. He's one of the few people that is still on Akuzekijima on this island. It takes a 12-hour ferry ride to evacuate, so it's not a quick, oh no, I leave. It takes time. So he is still left on this remote Japanese island where the earth is constantly shaking from this earthquake swarm. He chose to stay behind, but his family is on safer ground. He's 25 years old and he says he's absolutely exhausted and he's frightened to go to sleep. He says endless quakes are rumbling around Akuzakijima. More than 2,000 earthquakes, 2,050 by now in just three weeks. So 70% of the population of Akuzakijima have left. It's not a densely populated area. It's only a few people. They already evacuated by ferry after the strongest hit 
the strongest quake hit the island, the 5.6, they were leaving on July 3rd. Because they said this earthquake was toppling furniture, but also made it hard to stand up. They couldn't stand anymore. It was difficult to stand, and that was confirmed by the Japanese Meteorological Office as well. So Tobo, the school principal, stayed behind because he says the only school that they have on the island is now an evacuation center, and uh, he is the gatekeeper. So very honorable of him, but he says it has been, quote, repeatedly shaking for many days. I've been feeling very anxious and scared, and it's so difficult to sleep. And he says, at their worst, the earthquakes seem endless. And he says, I can sense when a big one is coming. Even in my sleep, I can feel it approaching from a distance. So then I wake up and I'm in fear. So just yesterday, when it started to rumble very strong again, it was an emergency situation for the island and Tobo has opened the school playground to the other 20 people that remained on the island and also five contractors that were there on the island. So in order to provide an open space for them from away from any buildings that could collapse by the tremors. So far, the school remains safe, not damaged yet. He said, I evacuated at around midnight and I went back to bed at around 1.30 a.m., but I could not sleep. I understand that. He said some of the quakes were so very strong. But then he says the responsibility comes with the job. Kudos to this guy. Really, really brave guy. He says, quote, as a school administrator, I've chosen to stay on the island to support the effort by coordinating with government officials and local residents. Wow, that is really, really good. He, sa he says, I stay home at night, but I always feel ready to evacuate, go to the school at any moment, even in the middle of the night. All officials say the community is sleep deprived and exhausted from these continuous earthquakes that keep happening day and night. Amongst the people that are still on the island, it's like firefighters, farmers, power company workers, one doctor and one nurse. The region has experienced long periods of tremors before with one significant event that was happening in 2023. But guys, if you compare this, we're at 2030 something 50 earthquakes right now. And in 2023, it was only 346 earthquakes and they thought that's a big one. And now we have all these magnitude five plus earthquakes and the islands are now getting a divorce right now, moving away from each other. So the officials are saying that currently there is no tsunami risk, but they are cautioning that the ground remains unstable and residents have been warned of the possibility, guys, that their buildings could collapse, landslides could happen, bigger earthquakes and maybe tsunamis because of landslides, for example. So just on the weekend, Japan, Japan's government has warned that more earthquakes could happen and stronger earthquakes could happen in the same area. So why is this happening? This question still remains only partially answered. Earthquakes are common in Japan. Unfortunately, they're getting a lot of them. They're getting about one fifth of the world's earthquakes that have magnitude six or higher. So they really get it all. And of course, Japan sits on the Pacific Ring of Fire that is home to 70% of the world's active volcanoes, where roughly 90% of all earthquakes occur, like a horseshoe-shaped ring basically encircling the Pacific Ocean. It's stretching 25,000 miles, and this is where many tectonic plates meet, subduct, move against each other, and they're causing friction, and they're releasing energy. And... Of course, that creates the shaking that is released in an earthquake. But this swarm here, what is going on? I mean, it's divorcing islands. <laughs> They're getting a divorce moving in different directions. We do have the subduction of the Ryuko Trench in this area. So we could have tectonic tension that could cause these earthquakes, but also magmatic intrusions coming from the volcanoes. Maybe the tectonic movement is activating this volcanic activity. Maybe it's both connected. 
And now they're intensifying just yesterday, at least two over magnitude five, and we have to see what today is bringing. And here I'm just scrolling through the list. They haven't even upgraded it for July 14th, but definitely we have at least 30 earthquakes on the 14th as well. But here you see, it's basically, if you scroll through it, the list is so long, you can scroll forever in the threes, in the twos, in the fours, in the fives. And there's way more that are not in this list here micro seismic below magnitude one so if you see this and if you look at the timing just minutes apart imagine you're on this island you have these shallow earthquakes and they keep coming keep coming keep coming we also had heavy rain over the weekend so ground could be more destabilized we could see more landslides maybe triggered by this continuous shaking on july 1st the japanese government has approved significant upgrades to the plan of safeguarding the public in the event of a major earthquake in Japan and in the event that disaster does strike. And this move comes amid an unprecedented swarm that they're dealing with. This is because that Tokara Island swarm. Already in March, the Japanese government has released an updated report on the threat that is posed by a quake in the Nankai Trough. That is roughly 700 miles, 900 kilometer fault long that runs parallel to the coast of southern Japan, from Kyushu in the west to Tokyo to its far eastern end. And that study, guys, puts the likelihood of a megathrust earthquake magnitude 9 at this subduction zone um, on the fault at 80% in the next 30 years not in 30 years, within the next 30 years. So that could happen today, tomorrow. They estimate that they will lose roughly 340,000 people, 2.5 million structures, and that a tsunami will impact coastal communities. So guys, I will keep you updated about this Tokara Island earthquake swarm. It's going to be kind of like a thriller to see what that develops into especially since they're warning us that there could be more to come and that there could be larger stuff to come so if you like the video guys leave it a like and if you want to support the channel check out the links in the description you can buy me a coffee and i will answer with a 30 second video message so we can chat with each other and if you want to become and or a supporting member of the channel, click the join button for more private stuff behind the scenes. And thank you for your supers. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here, guys. I see you in the next one. Really check out the videos in the end screen. It's kind of crazy what's going on in the world right now. You should really watch those. It's very, very interesting. I promise. See you soon, guys. Bye-bye.